we're, we're out there. We're just waiting for the big advertising companies to come in. So there's, there's okay, so there's um, a couple of things that the PCC has been talking about, um, and it, it, it's taken quite a long time to get to where we've got to. Um, one of them is the heating, which I'll just briefly mention, um, and then the reordering of the front of the church, um, which and and replacing the carpet, which I'll hand over to Paul um, to to uh, talk about. I'm I'm here now. I'm not speaking as me, my own vicar. I'm I'm the chair of the PCC as well. So these are decisions that have been made by the PCC, not by. John the vicar. So I just want to make that clear that this is a, a, a uh, these are a joint uh, decisions. Um, and if you have any questions or if there's any comments you want to go to the PCC afterwards, please please ask a PCC member or to ask Helena. Is Helena staying? Could Alison? Could you just go and search for Helena? Because Helena is the PCC secretary. If you're on the PCC, can you just put your hand up so people have got an idea? But so, okay, so we've got four representatives here. So you've got the two wardens and Paul as well. So these are people to speak to if you've got questions um, afterwards. And let me introduce you to, this is Helena in the blue. Uh, Helena's the PCC secretary. And so if you want to, if you, again, there's someone to speak to. And Alison is the treasurer. Okay. So, um, regards to the heating system, uh, it's long overdue to be replaced, and so the work, uh, what you need to get the work um, uh, done is something called a faculty, and, and in church language, that's almost like, I guess it's almost like planning permission, or what, whatever it is, um, and so for any works to happen in the church, you have to submit it to something called the Diocesan Advisory Committee, the DAC, they look at it, they, they kind of say yes or no, or uh, yes with these conditions. And then once it's gone through that pr process, um, if something's been recommended by the DAC, then you apply for something called a faculty, which is a little bit like if it was a listed building, you'd have to have some work done. You'd have to apply um, for work through a different, but the church uses something called a faculty. And then once you've got the faculty, then you can carry out the work. With the heating system, we have the faculty. We, uh, so what's going to happen is we're going to replace the existing boilers. Um, they're, they're, they are from the 80s, and uh, so they're less efficient, and they're becoming less reliable. And the other piece of work that needs doing is that the, the control of the heating uh, has um, more or less given up the ghost. So um, either the heating is on <laughs> and it's on and there's, no, and there's no, not much control, that's why it gets so hot in the hall, or it's off. <laughs> so, um, so we have put on individual thermostats on the radiators upstairs. Downstairs is underfloor heating and we need, uh, it used to work on zones, but all the, the electrics seem to have stopped working. So with the two things that are being done are replacing the uh, boilers and um, and getting control back. Uh, we've looked into green options, and uh, as things stand, to heat a church like this, um, actually, um, heat pumps uh, won't do it. You will still need gas boilers, unfortunately. We're, we're, um, I think if we were doing this 20 years in the future, maybe the technology would be there, um, or 10 years, but it's not quite there yet. So we're getting more efficient gas boilers, but we've also had a um, report done um, in terms of how we can improve the insulation of the church. And there's, so there was, there's another piece of work that we're, we're starting to work on, and what can we do? We know for sure, for example, we cannot insulate the roof without taking all the tiles off. Because of, this, because of the space um, to do this. So, so we know that's not possible uh, as things stand, but there may be things we can do um, ar around some other things that we're, we are following up on later. And the, the PCC is putting a kind of plan to working towards net uh, zero, carbon zero. Um, that's not done yet. That's a piece of work that is beginning. Okay, so that's, um, uh, so the heating system to change will cost us in the region of about 
uh, the figures are going to come up a bit later, about, say, £45,000, round about that, £50,000, something like that. Um, and the work will hopefully start. We've got a, just got a contract to sign, faculties all in place, um, and so the work is aimed to start end of March. That's the heating system. Have you got any questions about the heating system? Hopefully it will. Hope uh, the, the two things. If we've got better control so that the hall is not overheating and uh, with more efficient boilers, um, hopefully it will. Um, but in the recognition that the, the, the cost of gas is, you know, is going to change. Yes, thanks, Jackie. So we are we are we are calling. We, we have a contract with um, a company, and so we, we are calling them out more because of the unreliability of the boilers, and uh, and actually um, some other things as well. So hopefully we'll save some money there, as well. And then if we follow up on the net zero, maybe we'll need the boilers a little less or or something. But we're on a losing wicket, aren't we, in a building like this? Anyway, so um, we might be able to. We, we do have the funds to cover it, and so um, grant funding bodies, particularly there's some things in the in, in the in the Church of England you could appeal for. But I think because we have the money to cover it, um, we we are less likely to. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't put something in. To, to try, but but we, we St Dunstan's is in a much better place financially than many churches are. Many Church of England churches are. Um, that that, that uh, but in doing the kind of work we're talking about, we, we are cutting into reserves, and, and those reserves are less likely to be replaced. Um, they are they are through generous legacies mostly. Um, so we have to be aware of that. But at least this is something you know we're investing in the future, aren't we? That, well, that, that's that's the, that's the hope, and and the system does need replacing. But um, let me hand it over to Paul. Paul Paul's is much more interesting in many ways. Um, so thanks, Paul. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so um, as obviously the lots of you will have observed, the carpet has been sort of falling to bits for probably about the last 10 years, if not a bit longer, um, and has now been designated trip hazard. So we were definitely going to be replacing the carpet, but as part of our sort of responsibilities in terms of the PCC, it was to look at the wider uh, picture of the, the, main, the main aspect of the church. And we sort of looked at another, some other areas. So this this part here, the, the raised area, um, as well as the, the sort of view aspect from, um, from the seats into uh, to the altar. And one of the things that we sort of looked at was this, the 1983 um, conversion, there was this sort of rather odd proportional split so that the um, area um, of the raised uh, platform was 13 and a half meters, and the area for seating for the congregation was only 9.6. So that clearly is, as, as we are you know, a growing church, that, that proportion would allow us to maybe shorten this and be able to um, put some more seats into the main body of the church. We also um, have had, for, well, since 1983, when they um, did the conversion, the problem of um, this pinch point around the columns. So whenever we have a big service or we have a communion, this becomes the, the sort of um, area where people sort of bump into each other, which really shouldn't be the case in terms of um, our responsibility to sort out the circulation um, for the church. So that was um, an area. The next bit was, you know, we are a growing church, you know, thank the Lord. So, um, it hasn't been a problem previously in that the seats over here tend to be the last to fill up. We tend to fill up, obviously, around here, and, the, and people sort of sit 
in that area there because the pulpit tends to block the view. So one of the things that we also looked at was whether actually we um, move the pulpit or we actually remove the pulpit in terms of uh, opening up the, the body of the church. And then it, by doing all of that, that would allow us to get extra seats into, the, into particularly this main section, so therefore maximize um, sort of the best views in terms of the altar, the band, and the screen. So our proposed plan and the most contentious part was obviously um, either moving or removing the pulpit. This was a, a project that um, I was involved in in a, um, a church where my partner goes, St. Michael's down in Blackheath. They had the same problem. The altar uh, blocked all the view to one half of the church and we got a faculty to, to sort of move, to actually move that in that, in that instance. So it has been done um, on a number of occasions. Our new plan that we looked at was um, bringing those proportions back into line and actually making the sort of viewing angles work a lot better. Um, and then we were also going to um, instate an aisle down the middle, a sort of designated aisle down the middle, and some of the sort of circulation spaces as well. Um, the area up here on the raised platform, you, if you've ever been up here, you can sort of see the massive trip hazard. The carpet doesn't really do us any favours. The AV is a real problem um, in that we only have eight ports for the band in this position over here and elect the electrics, half the electrics don't really work. So that would be part of the project too, would be to install AV um, and HDMIs. So um, what's happened is at this end of the church we're on old technology, at the desk we're on new technology and the two don't talk to each other. So that's something to sort out. And that's, that's part of what we would do if we are restructuring the, uh, the, the, this raised area. With the PCC, we looked at proportions, what works, what doesn't work, and we sort of came up with an agreed um, shape and size. The idea is to raise the quality of the church, always with everything we do, when we've done the lighting, when we've done the hall, when we've done some other projects, we're always looking for our legacy to improve what we have and leave to the next generation something better than we found. So we're, the proposal is to take the cue from the Lady Chapel, which has an oak parquet floor, and um, bring a parquet floor um, to this raised area. And we'd look to have oak as per the Lady Chapel and then bring in a detail of this dark, it's actually fumed oak, um, which we're picking up from the rear adoss and the um, steps up to the rear adoss and the Lady Chapel. Um, and these are some samples that we've sort of picked out that we've got signed off. Um, and this is the sort of proposal in terms of the floor boxes that we're putting in. So we'll be putting in uh, power, um, AV and HDMI into there. This is the existing layout. So you can sort of see um, we're reducing the sort of front area, but we're curving it. So it sort of has a sort of gentler um, approach. Um, and then we're putting this um, square area around the um, altar to sort of pick up the quality um, and the, uh, the sort of, you know, bring an element of hierarchy to the altar area. Uh, this is the altar, that is not the altar, as I found out doing this project, that's just the rear adoss. Um, I thought that was the altar as well. <laughs> the high, I thought it was a high altar, apparently not in the Church of England. Okay, um, this was again, just for reassurance, this was a church I did um, over the summer, this is um, uh, Haven Green Baptist, um, which came uh, via to uh, contact uh, of Tony's. And again, on the left, you can see they had this huge screen, took that down, introduced a, a, um, a, a, a raised area. There, they, they needed it for performances and that sort of stuff. So it was a bit more involved than our one. Um, the carpet. So at the moment, we have this 1983 domestic, apparently, from the contractors who came to have a look at it, um, uh, 
broadloom carpet, we will be putting in commercial grade carpet tiles, um, so they're much harder wearing. Um, colour was uh, a key component. In terms of our brand, and when we did our brand a few years back, the inspiration very much came from St Dunstan's himself um, and his, his cloak, and basically what the goldsmiths, the gift that the goldsmiths gave us, which was these wonderful windows, and particularly at the back, and what they understood was, you know, with a red brick building, you're looking to introduce a contrasting colour. So the, that's where the blue comes from in terms of our brand um, and this, this idea of stand out from the red and the stone. In terms of the pattern, we're looking at what uh, more formalised church and cathedral designs uh, put in place. So this idea of picking out the column grid and picking out an, an aisle and um, the sort of pathways. And this is the layout that we sort of put forward for that. So the um, darker area is, will be in a blue, and the lighter area will be in a light gray. And although the, this doesn't really do justice to the colors, that's the sort of contrast um, that we'll be getting. And then the, this is the sort of um, how the pattern will come out. So as I say, we're gonna introduce the aisle, pick out the, 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 the um, structural grid of the building, and then introduce the timber um, up onto this, this raised area. And that's it. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, okay, for, so I've got the mic. So it's, uh, Paul, just to say a huge thank you to you, and also for the amount of work that you and thought that you've put into this, um, and then the number of times you've patiently explained it to the PCC. Thank you. <laughs> it's been very good of you. So. Um, so that, that's, that's the kind of work we're talking about. Um, so you, you've got an idea of the raised area. It's, it's, probably, uh, it's probably from about here, then going round. So, so it's, it's, it's just from the pillars and then coming round. So it's opening this kind of space out here. This will be flat down here. And then you've got, we can put another row of chairs in. We've got, we've got just more circulation and, and hopefully better visibility as well. Um, as in, um, oh. Can I just ask Alison just to say something about the finances and then we'll take questions about what Paul said and uh, so we can just... Um, is that all right? Thanks, um, Alison. Okay, so very briefly, as John said, the, the whole of the heating thing will cost just over £50,000. That's with a built-in you know, contingency for if things go wrong. It may cost a bit less than that. If you were here... Back when we had our 140th anniversary in 2019, we, we raised some money. We raised about £11,000, so we already had that. And then COVID and other things intervened and we never got it done, actually getting it done. We do have money in the bank to do it. To a large extent, thanks to Valerie and her very generous legacy that she left for us. Obviously, if anybody... Um, is able to donate towards it, that's wonderful because it means that we are, um, you know, not using funds that could be used for something else. But I know some people already did give uh, a few years back towards the heating. The interior remodeling, again, with built-in, you know, contingency is another 40,000. So the total cost of all of them together is about 92,000 but we've got some of that already as we said we raised some funds already so we're actually spending above that an extra 81,000 pounds which is a lot of money to spend there's been a lot of serious thought about it as um, uh, Sue was saying you can apply for grants for these things but they look at your account so they say well you've got the money <laughs> tough you've got to spend it you know if you're if it's a rainy day, you've got to spend your rainy day funds. We can try, but I don't hold up a lot of hope, particularly for the heating, because they'll say they'll only give funds for um, heat pumps and things, not for gas boilers. But there's nothing to stop us trying. Thank you. And thank you, Alison, for doing such a good job with the accounts as well. Um, so we, we, um, so, uh, so the, the little leaflet we put out today it's, it was, it's more, can you say, it, it hasn't tied into the project, but it was just a reminder of giving, really, and ways that we can give. Um, 
So any questions? Please, th please, please, please don't hold back. This is, this is a good moment to just let rip. Any questions? Oh, Scott, no, come on then. Stay. pulpit so um, so we, we, <laughs> we we've had discussions with that the, the, the first the first or one of the ideas was to if we could move the pulpit and put it right at the um, east end of the church by the rare dos um, when we when we put this to the DAC so we put two options to the DAC which was to uh, remove it completely from the church um, or to to move it to the the front, they told us that if, if you, it, that they, um, basically they said no to moving it to the, the front. And so they said, you know, if you want to carry on with, with that part of the project, then you'll have to remove it. So we've looked at um, different options with that in terms of, um, can, it's some, sometimes they, they have a, a saleable, they, they have a, a value, uh, but apparently this one is, is not of a quality, so we, we've um, so so Helena did some work, uh, looking. At well, yes. Well, yes. So so we, we, we so so the choice we have uh, was either um, uh, yes, um, sell it or dispose of it. So we we will have to look to dispose of it. But there is a, there is an, there is a, I, I, I say this um, without having done any research on it. Uh, one proposal is to see can that be turned into a lectern so we keep, we keep it and have it. Now, we, I've no idea if that's possible or not, but just trying to keep something of it in, in the church if we can. But um, yes, but, but also recycling is, you know, how it could be recycled. Thank you. So, so those are thoughts on that at the moment. It's going to take Tony then to Sue. Is that uh, Tony? Just wondering if the reordering of it goes to more seats in the church. Or just so, so, so it allows for more seats. Uh, I, does the, I'll repeat it for that. So does the reordering allow for more seats? Yes, yeah, so it is potentially possible you know, to put another, uh, at least another row in, in front. Yeah, so 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 so, so um, and it allows the the north side of the church to have more um, possibly more seats, but better visibility, so people actually use those seats you know, for the sake of the. Uh, um, so yes, the answer is more. Uh, Sue. So, so thank you. So, so a practical point is to um, buy an excess of carpet tiles in order to replace any that get damaged uh, whilst the colours are, are still available. Um, thank you. And, and what's lovely about that, I, I think, sorry, this isn't a question, is of what Paul's thought about is in terms of, it, it's, it's, a, it's not quite, but it's a bit like a cathedral floor, isn't it? Because it's got a design in the carpet uh, that you can, a very clear um, so, so making more of the area as well, actually, which is fa a, a, it's a lovely touch. Um, any other thoughts? Any other comments? Heidi. So uh, on the raised area, will there be any kind of ramp? Um, we spoke about it. I don't know where we got to with it. Paul, where did we get to? Um, because it's, it, is, it isn't, because it isn't um, that... It's only 200 mil raised that actually bringing a, a temporary ramp in becomes a, um, a, a more sort of viable option. In fact, that, the church that I showed you, uh, Haven Green, 
I designed uh, a, a ramp into that, um, uh, that raised area. And in fact, in the end, we just, we just went back to a, a temporary one because it um, encroached so far into the raised area that it became a trip hazard um, in, it, in itself. So, so uh, introducing a temporary uh, ramp that can be used when, when we need to. No, but thank you. And communion rails will be back as well, but they'll just be, they'll be um, not the ones that we have, but, um, uh, but we will still have communion rails. Uh, any other? Go on, Georgie. Yeah. Yes, heating's under floor. Oh, uh, underneath the carpet is not wood. When the, when the underfloor heating was put in, all the wood that was here was dug up, and it's concrete. And the pipes are underneath the concrete and over. So if we just take the carpet up, we're on concrete. Is that, is that the answer? Yes. So, so it's, not, it's not pretty underneath the carpet at all. Uh, and, and actually... So, so yes, yeah, so, so the tiles that have been chosen have a kind of breathability to allow heat um, through. We have to look at that, otherwise the tiles won't last the distance, actually. So, so Paul's looked into that, and um, we, we don't really have the financial but to, uh, capacity to replace it with a wooden floor. Um, it's a shame they didn't stack the wooden blocks when they did it. And also, cutting this back uh, will allow, underneath here is, um, is, is underfloor heating, so, so actually this raised ed, ed, edge uh, actually blocks some of it. That's why we've got these vents um, somewhere around the side. You see some vents to allow some of the heat out. But if that's taken away, more of the, um, more of the floor will be open. Uh, well, will be, it'll be more efficient in terms of um, the... Well, that, that might depend more on the... Um, probably not. Probably not. Um, that's back to the heating. Um, because what we have to do is the, is the loss of heat. So, um, but, but what we will find is those Sundays when we all come in and it's absolutely freezing, it's usually because the boilers have blown out and, and, then, and then we don't stand a chance. But it's not too, it's, it's not too bad today, is it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> any other, any other, any other thoughts? Yeah. So when the work will be done, it, the the, um, the 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 reordering um, inside, we're, we're aiming for July. Um, and when, when things start to quieten down in the life of the church, because it will be disruptive. We, we haven't really thought that out completely in terms of um, 
uh, but, but that, that will be a bit quieter then rather than doing it um, Easter time or something. So, yes, we we we, we uh, the, 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 um, yeah, so, so that, that exactly that kind of thing that needs to be thought through and, and how do we. So, so yeah, so, so we're, we're very fortunate to have space, actually. Okay. I don't want to cut you down, cut you back. If, if you have got any comments, please, as I say, give them to the PCC or, or ask, get hold of Helena if you're not sure, ask, or, or ask one of the, as I say, because, um, uh, you know, we, we don't want to, we want to hear from people and hear what they think. And during the faculty process, what happens is, uh, we don't quite have the faculty for this. It, it's the, the DAC, the Diocesan Advisory Committee, has approved the work. Uh, there's just one little thing they need to hear from us, and then, uh, and, and then they'll send the faculty papers in. Um, and then during that process, what happens is, is, is notices go up inside the church and on the notice boards outside, which gives people a 28-day... Um, opportunity to write to the Chancellor with any objections uh, or uh, and also or if you want to see the plans we, we will make the plans available they'll be in the office or uh, we're going to dot them up on the wall as well um, but um, but the, probably the best thing to do before that is if, if you've got any comments any any objections or, or anything you want to say fantastic to catch a member of the PCC and tell them so we know that for the next PCC meeting as well. Um, so, uh, lovely. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for staying. That's much appreciated and showing an interest. And um, enjoy the rest of your Sunday.